and now a demonstration video of my large gasifier. This is the midge that I built in another video. This is its big brother right here. It costs about $50 to make. It's made out of three different pots that I bought at a restaurant supply store. Two stainless ones inside, a burn pot, an air cowling pot, and a large aluminum outer pot with handles. Then I used a small 12 volt blower fan. Uh, you can find these in some Dell computers or you can order them from a lot of places online. To adapt the fan up to 12 volt battery power, what I did was I went to Radio Shack and bought two 9 volt battery adapters. They're the, called the premium kind, they're hard plastic. I wired one in reverse so that they both snap together and make a nice quick disconnect setup. So one is wired to the fan, the other is wired in reverse on the cord which has a cigarette lighter plug on it. So you snap them back to back, now you have a quick release cord. We're going to run this gasifier off the jumper pack I made in the other video. It has a 12 volt cigarette lighter socket added to a Walmart battery box. The car battery that's inside this battery box will power this fan for probably a couple days, I would assume. So you can get tons of cooking time out of this. The gasifier is made like this. The computer fan just blows inside this large outer casing. There's one stainless pot on the outside, another stainless pot docked inside it, which is the burn pot. This outer pot acts as an air cowling. There's a large hole cut in the bottom of it. Air from the fan comes into the large casing, then blows inside this hole, eventually making its way into the burn pot. This pot within a pot within a pot type of setup keeps the heat from the burn pot from seriously making it to the outside. This thing stays uh, on, on the lower part of the body, it stays about 100 degrees while running, whereas up at the top it's hundreds of degrees. It's really bad. I, I don't even have a, a uh, thermometer that measures how hot this gets up here. I believe they may get up to like 1400 degrees in this range somewhere, 1600, something like that. And what I did was, I took the lid from the outside aluminum pot, just cut a hole in it so the stainless pots fit down inside. And there's only screws holding it all together. There's no uh, air sealing or anything done on this stove because it doesn't actually need it. I'm going to be using wood pellets to fire the stove this time. It gets about 45 minutes to an hour of run time out of a batch of pellets. You could also use any type of wood in this, uh, any type of broken sticks, twigs, what have you. It'll burn many different woody materials. The way I designed this stove, there's like a bell inside here in the inner pot and it, it's called an inset pot actually and there's like a little line right in here. I fill it with wood pellets right up to that line. The burn pot has a double row of air holes all around the very bottom on the side. They're 1 8 inch, so two rows. Up at the top, there's just a number of holes going around the upper rim. It originally started out as two holes, but I kind of cut the middle out and made them into slots. Uh, these don't work all that great, uh, regular holes are fine. And the only drill bit that will drill this stainless steel is a 1 8 inch titanium drill bit by DeWalt. You can pick them up at Home Depot. Those 1 8 inch DeWalt titaniums will go right through the stainless steel, no problem. Any of the other drill bits I found, they will not penetrate this. They'll actually glow and basically melt down completely while trying to drill this metal. Let's go ahead and fill the gasifier.
So, right up to the fill line inside the pots. Next, I use a little bit of liquid fuel to soak the pellets so that they start up a little bit easier. You can use diesel fuel in here, jet fuel, kerosene, alcohols, and I'm going to use a little bit of charcoal lighter fluid. All you want to do is put about a shot glass worth, about an ounce, in the top of this. Spread it around a little bit and just let it soak in for a couple minutes. Do not use gasoline or Coleman white gas in here because it'll collect the vapors and you can get a really big fireball out of this. Then go ahead and just put a little bit of paper on top of this and light it. I've used toilet paper before, anything of that nature. I'm just going to use regular notebook paper now. There'll be a tiny bit of smoke from the burning paper. You can let it go about maybe 20 seconds and then go ahead and plug the fan in. fan is on. You can see the gas is being collected already. Notice how easy this was to light. There's no smoke coming out of this and even though the wind is blowing the flame is not going out or wavering at all. The fan induction on this will keep this burning no matter what. It's only been a minute and already we've got a nice charcoal layer going on top. Notice also that the 12 volt blower fan is pretty much silent. It's been about five minutes. It's been about 10 minutes now. Got some really good tall flames out here. About eight inches tall. I can't even get near this thing out here, the heat's that hot. Now after 10 minutes, this is about 100 degrees down here. If you had a pair of gloves on, you could just pick this stove up and carry it around. Move it around, no problem. These stoves are pretty safe. It's pretty much like a campfire just controlled and contained inside a metal enclosure. The outside doesn't get all that hot. It won't burn anything underneath. Like I could set this thing right on this uh, plastic tablecloth out here and it wouldn't do a thing to it. The air coming in from the blower circulates around on the inside of this and keeps the outer container cool. Okay, we're at the half hour mark now. Got a little bit of wind out here. You can see it's not going out. And you can see we've only used about two and a half inches worth of pellets. It's about the 40 minute mark now. Big time serious flames, the wind isn't blowing all that much. Ah, that's hot. Anytime after the five minute mark, you can go ahead and reload this thing. You can use a, uh, I use like a big stainless spoon. I think it's like an ex uh, army mess spoon. And you can go ahead and shovel in extra pellets, just a couple spoons at a time. And you can make this burn for, uh, you know, up to a couple hours if you want, no problem. Before any kind of ash will even build up in here. Pretty much serious heat in there.
anytime the stove is burning full power, don't touch the rim around the top. It's way over 300 degrees. Okay, at 56 minutes, you can see that the pellets are starting to burn directly down in the bottom, and we've stopped producing gas at the top ring. There's a little bit of gas being produced at the 56 minute mark. Just tiny bits, but mostly it's the pellets burning directly down in the bottom. There's tons of coals down in there. You could still cook food over this, seriously. You can leave the gasifier running till the flames go completely out. The coals will still continue to glow down in the bottom and you still have usable heat. You could still warm your hands, uh, dry off a pair of boots, anything like that. The coals will stay in the bottom for quite some time. You just keep this thing running until it goes dead cold. With a 12 volt car battery in the pack, you have tons of run time on this fan. You can run this thing for two days, easy. 61 minutes of run time, the flame is finally out. Still have good coals burning down inside. And this will go on for another probably half hour, I bet. So you see, a fan-powered gasifier is a really good idea. They don't go out in the wind, and they can be powered very easily off 12-volt computer fans. Almost indefinitely, if you have a car battery. The midge is nice, three cans and four screws, but for anywhere from $50 on up to about $200, you can get yourself one of these.